Welcome to the Garage Engineer. I'm Dennis. I was going through an old closet and I was rummaging around and found this old lantern. This lantern was my grandfather's. It had a really cool design that I really liked, but it's been sitting and I've never fired it up and I don't even know the condition of it. So I thought it'd be good uh, now that it's getting fall and getting a little cooler, we'll do something inside the shop. By uh, let's try to see if we can restore this. I don't want to repaint it. I want to keep some of the patina. It's got a lot of rust on it. Um, but let's try to clean it up and see if we can get it fired, fired up. So this is a Coleman. Um, and, and printed in here. Let's see here if I can find it. I don't know if it's showing up very well, but it's Coleman. It says 200A Coleman. It's stamped into the aluminum around the shroud. Uh, I looked it up online. This is probably a 1950s, mid 50s, somewhere around there. All right, so we'll get this disassembled and um, we'll get down to the main part of the lantern here. We'll see what some of this so rusted on here. Let me get some penetrant. So I got some of the good stuff here, Kroll. But uh, this is twenty dollars a bottle. Uh, I need to find a cheaper place that sells it. Put a little bit there. I'm gonna apply just a little bit of pressure on here. I don't want to break it. I know we have to let that scroll sit. Oh, there you go. There you go. So that's what it looked like originally, real shiny, but over time we got rusted. We'll have to figure out how we can buff that out. We won't get it as shiny, but we'll get it cleaned up at least. Now what I really like about this globe is this is a Pyrex globe. I know Pyrex is a brand name but that was big back then that was the top of the line manufacturer of glassware yeah this gas there's something in the gas tank that's not good because <laughs> i don't know how old it is the mantle looks brand new yeah i like to get it all stripped out so we can get all the way down to the uh, tank we can clean it out Guess we can take this bolt off right here and we'll spray a little bit. Now if this doesn't work, I was thinking we could convert it to LED, but the only way to put a battery pack I can see right now is cutting the bottom of the gas tank up, but I really don't want to do that. That's if we can't get it to work. But we'll just have to see. Well, there you go. That's interesting. All right, so what do we got here? We don't want to lose that washer there. Maybe we get this whole assembly off together at one piece. It's just screwed down into the tank. Let me spray a little bit. Well, let's see if we really, I hope there's not pressure on here. Let's see if we get the tape cap off first. How about that? No, shoot. I don't think there's pressure on here. There is pressure. Wow. I don't know if you heard that. I turned the uh, the pump and it relieved a lot of pressure. Interesting. Who knows how long that's been sitting. Hmm. It's been leaking. There's fuel on here. Just throwing a little crawl into the gas cap. So let that gas cap sit a little bit with a crawl. So what I'm going to do is. Okay. 
Okay. No, nothing. This is on there good. Wow, that's on there. Really tight. All right. We'll just spray it again and just let it sit. I'm gonna start taking some of this other pieces apart and then we will, because uh, we'll probably give them to soak. Because I don't know if they're clogged or, or what the status is. There's a wire in there, that's interesting. It has a little needle. Gotta be real careful with that. Uh, that's not gonna pick up, but uh, there's a little needle on the end of that thing right there where my thumb is. And I guess that's kind of like the needle in a carburetor that uh, defines how much fluid gets up in there. But that whole thing is kind of dirty, so we're gonna have to take it apart anyway to clean it. So we'll put that off to the side. Let's see if there's a piece in here. No, that doesn't move. I just make sure this thing doesn't pop out. I don't want to lose it. You see right here, the crawl's working. It's moving. Ah, to see that. This it is like a car uh, choke. It's adjusting up here. You see when I move this? You can see right here. It's moving up and down. So it's like opening the cart. That moves that needle up and down and makes it bigger or smaller. So it's kind of like the car choke on a carb. So we'll get into that. Let's try to get this whole thing off the top. I'm going to let this all soak for a little bit and we'll come back and see if we can uh, loosen it up anymore. So I've been looking at this gas cap and it is not moving so I'm going to just let that penetrating oil work on that. I wanted to put heat on it but I know there's a rubber gasket in there and I really don't want to melt it so uh, but I'm marring up the knurling on here and I need to figure out a better way to get this off so we're going to wait on that I figure we move back up here um, to the uh, the valve uh, so that we can get it started to clean while we're waiting um, and then maybe we can work on the gas tank later. Uh, so for right now, I still haven't figured out how to get this off, but I figure we need to get the shroud off here. Um, we'll, and I thought we could get the uh, control knob off. Let's see here. Yeah, I gotta look into the history. It was a very interesting concept of how this was created. I wonder if this is based off of another type of lantern. Well, it's still going. Let's see here. There you go. Well, I got the back part off. We'll, we'll get the rest of it off in a minute. So here's the needle. I mean, all this is really, it doesn't look like it was used very much. So it's pretty clean. This is plastic, so we'll get that off and then we'll soak everything else. I don't see any bushings or anything in there. Put that over here. So now I can just lift this up and take it off. So now we got this part off, we can get closer to the valve. So I guess we will take really nothing to hold on to. Let's see here. So I took a lunch break. And I thought about it and I was playing with it a little bit off camera. So what I've decided is I'm taking a clamp to hold the base of the uh, lantern. And then that clamp is clamped with another clamp to the table. So that will hold it. And then I'm going to try to uh, use a adjustable wrench and see if we can get this top off. Still haven't figured out the gas cap yet. 
It's on there good. Well, there you go, it's moving. So I'm gonna move it back and forth a little bit. It's got that fuel in there. That's probably what's made it kinda gunky and stuck. Now that we got it going, oh, that's much easier. All right. all this dirt out before before we pull the top off I'm sure there's a lot more junk in the gas tank let's try to avoid not having to put more in there so we're just getting this off it's going the wrong way there you go that's the pickup tube. Now I can still smell the fuel in there. So we'll get that, we'll soak it. That's probably clogged. There's a hole. I don't know if you can see. There's a hole right there at the bottom there. And that's clogged. So we might just need to soak it and see, see what we get. Now we get in the tank. And let's see what, well, before we do that, let's try to get this cap off. I'm going to try, I'm not, I've been using the vice grips and it's messing it up. I'm not very happy about that. Let's try. This isn't any, any better. Still using that. I don't think this rubber tubing really helps any. It's not protecting anything. It's not even moving. All right, let's see what treasures we got. Nothing. Oh, there's a little bit. Yeah, I'd say that's uh, dirty. Just a little bit. Right, let's get the. Uh, the pump out too. And my favorite flathead screws. Well, these actually came out pretty decently. No work. Two. All right. A little cruddy. A little cruddy. Oh, it's rubber. Uh, we're going to have to take that off, I think, before we soak it. This square piece right here is... It's in there. I don't know if there's... I want to count how many turns just in case it's calibrated for some reason or set. So, uh, I'll make a little mark. Here's our mark. So, we're going to go counterclockwise. One. One turn. It is. There's a needle on here. And it was one turn. And it was just sitting in there. So, let's just remember that. So now we're just down to the tank. See if any other goodies come out. Yeah, I think that was about it. So while we continue the, um trying to get the gas cap off the tank. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some evapor rust on some of the parts that it, we want to get the rust off of. And I got the carburetor parts cleaner uh, from Berryman's that I'd like to use on my small engine uh, carburetors. And we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to soak some of the, uh, the fuel delivery parts in it. But first, I'm going to clean this up and get as much of the dirt off as I can. And then we're going to soak this into the uh, evapor rust and see how that works on these pieces. I just got soap and water in a bottle and a toothbrush. We'll just get some of this uh, sawdust and some of uh, this dirt particles off of it.
Well, I'll continue this, and then we'll, I'll bring it back when I go to the next step. I just did a light brush, and I didn't really just got the big chunks off of it. So now we'll put it in our bucket, and we'll fill it up. I got it only a quart. I don't have enough, so we'll probably have to flip it over, do part of it, and then flip it over after a while. Just pour it all in there. I got over half. Let's see if there's anything else. See if the bale fits. We can stick half of the bale in there, or some of it, maybe. Yeah, I probably need to get a bigger container. Probably need to get more Vaporust, but we'll put that off to the side. Let's get those barrenments open. I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. That's probably next on my wish list to get. But this has been working really well. I just let it sit. I'm not really in a hurry. Not a speed shop, so I can let it sit a little longer and get the same results. So what we'll do is we'll get the cap off. This is the fuel mixture cap. We'll just unscrew that. That's plastic and aluminum, so we're not going to stick that in there. There's some washers in there. I'm just going to leave it. We'll just do it as one unit. We'll clean it out later if we need to. And the, this comes with a basket. We'll put them all in in a minute. All right, so let's see what else do we need. Let's see what. Let's take this apart and see what's inside. If it's got any bushings, if we can. There we go. And I think we decided this was going to be our choke lever from when you're first starting it up. I probably have to go find some Coleman fuel. I don't have any. And it's not, most of the new Coleman's now take uh, dual fuel. You can just use uh, other types of fuel. But I'm sure this one is just strictly uh, the old Coleman fuel. We can go find some. But I don't have any with me at the shop. Alright, so let's see here. We pull this out with this piece up top here. It's just free spinning, I think. Let's see here. I think this rod goes in here somehow and is turning it up and down. But I'm not sure. Hmm. We'll let it soak. We'll ha I'll have to figure out. I don't know what. Here's the bottom pickup tube. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's got a needle in it. Real long needle. Spring in a pickup tube. So we gotta be careful not to lose that. Oh. You got your spring and a pickup tube and this needle went way down in there. So we'll take that out so we can clean the tip off on that. We gotta be real gentle with that. This is the needle. It goes in the pump. We'll put that in there. And I think this gasket, can we get it off without breaking it? I might just clean this up by hand because I'm not sure what the Berryman's will do to this rubber. And it's old and fragile and it's not that dirty. And it's clean. So we're going to leave this, this part out. And here's the tube that goes on the, it was on the top part we'll stick that in there uh, let's see here let's see if this is another needle let me get some pliers oh yeah this is that little needle that goes inside the top and that's got a, there's a lot of fine tips on these things we'll leave that out separate that's all the pieces we want to put in the chem dip so let's get that in there I'm gonna let that sit Give that a little bath there. That stinks, so we'll cover it up. Alright. While we're waiting for the uh, items to soak, 
Uh, I did want to just clean up some of the other pieces. I uh, used my rotary tool to clean up some of the brass and the pieces and the aluminum pieces and they clean up really nicely. Now we got the globe, Pyrex globe, that I'm just going to use soap and water and see if we can get what we can get out of here. And I'm just trying to get the big stuff off. We can fine tune it with a cleaner rag later. Let's get the inside here. Alright, we're going to check on the thing sitting in the carb cleaner, but before we do that, let's give an update on the... It's getting there. Still got a little bit, a little ways to go, so we'll, we'll let that soak some more. Let's go ahead and open up. This stuff's strong, so be careful breathing it. It's looking good. Well, let's get it out. We'll rinse them down. And uh, we'll take a look at it. So we'll just transfer these pieces into our container and be careful of our needles not to bend them. Now I'll just get some soap and water and uh, clean everything. And it cleans up really well. Just gotta wipe it down. So I'll keep doing that for the rest of the pieces and I'll bring it back when we get done. So after wiping everything down, uh, everything cleaned up really well except for this. This is more ash and soot. But I... This is clogged on the end right here. And I can't blow through it. So I think I'm going to let this soak a little longer. I think it's pretty clogged up. Um, and then this, I'm not sure if that's... is black. It's carbonized, or if that was meant to have some type of coating on there for a sealant. So I didn't want to wipe off too much of it. I don't know if you can see. Right there. It has a lot of kind of swirl pattern, so I'm not sure if it's supposed to be there or not. So I'm going to leave it. And uh, I'm going to look, I'm going to let this part soak just a little bit longer to get, see if we can get this tip cleared. So I pulled this out of the berry bins, we let it sit, and it's cleaned up a lot better. Um, even the tip, this top part comes off, and there's a little hole down in the middle of it that's got to be cleaned, and that's where it's distributed through. So I think that's good enough. I think I'll take it to the uh, uh, rotary tool and kind of clean it up a little bit just to make it look nice, but other than that, it, it's pretty clean. So we gotta get back to this gas tank. We gotta get this cap off. So what I've been using, I consider these more plumber pliers, adjustable, but they're flat. They're made for like big nuts on the uh, plumbing to get a hold of and grab it and turn it. Where this is round and you're not getting much, uh, it's just touching one at two points right here. So while I was out, um, I decided to get a new tool which these are uh, vice, Erwin vice grips um, and it has it's made for nuts to sit in here so you get more points of contact now it still has the teeth on there which I really don't like because it's going to mar up the brass but as hard as it, it's on there and I can't get heat to it uh, we're going to just do the best we can I'm still going to use the uh, inner tube and what I'm going to do is ro do a rocking back and forth motion on it, and maybe we'll get it loose here. So let's get you a little closer. So we get that wrapped around. Now it's moving. See, it's getting, a, it's getting a better grip. I can feel it. I'm moving back and forth. There we go. A back and forth motion. And now it's spinning freely, but it's coming off here. There you go. Let's see what that looks like. Well, that's not supposed to come off. That's probably the vent. That's the rubber vent. See, I unscrewed it earlier, 
and that's what's holding that. So we need to get that off. And these have a, uh, as you can see, here you go. You can see here's it's angled to fit in the nut to get more surface area, and two, it's got a tip to uh, catch to pinch things. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to pinch using the front of the teeth. And I'll have this listed in my Amazon store if you want to take a look at it. There you go. It's just a gasket. We'll have to clean that up a little bit. And we'll screw it back on. Well, we'll leave it separate. But you see I marred it up. You can see I marred up the side. And that's the reason why you really don't want to do it this way because it, it mars up the knurlings. But that's all I could do. I didn't really have a choice on that. Um, and I took that piece off. All it is is this is the vent. So you can screw it tight and it'll close, it'll seal off so it doesn't leak. But I'm going to leave it loose for now because we're going to clean it. I can put a light down the top and then we can look inside here. And it's pretty, I guess that's rust. I don't, you're not going to be able to see. It's too, uh, too small of a hole. So, we need to get more Evaporust basically is what it is. But what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to pour a little bit of what Evaporust we've got in here. And we'll let that sit overnight and I'll just have to go buy some more tomorrow. So inside the gas cap is this brass uh, seal. I guess it. this is what snugs it on so uh, gas doesn't leak out. I did want to show you how I've been cleaning the parts with the brass parts. I've got these sanding balls that go on your rotary sander and uh, they work really well and they clean up the brass really nice and because they're kind of a soft ball they can get into the crevices really well too but you see how well that brass is coming up it doesn't take off very much just takes off the grime and shines it up and makes it look pretty and this you're not even going to see but I still wanted to clean it up a little bit if you look in the description I'll have a, li a link to uh, this item too if you're interested in it. They're pretty handy for getting to small areas. So it's the end of the night and I went out and got another gallon of Evaporust. So what we'll do is we'll flip the part over that's in our container and fill up some more Evaporust in that container and then add some more Evaporust in the fuel tank so we can get some of that rust out of there. And then we'll let it sit overnight. We'll check in the morning and see how it looks. It's the next day and we're going to check to see how everything turned out. So let's dump this out. And we'll take a look. It's not too bad. Some particles floating around. Let's see if we can get a look inside. So this is what came out of the tank. It's not too bad. Um, see if we can get a light in here and maybe we can see get a good view of what's left so not the best but as long as we get all the particles out so that uh, nothing gets in our fuel I'll blow it out with some air uh, I think that'll work and I just took some brake clean to get some of this uh, gunk that was had uh, come out of the, the tank and kind of solidified. And I took a toothbrush and I'm going to start just brushing it. I don't want to do too much brake clean because I don't want the paint to come off. But I think that's working there. So we'll, we'll do a little bit of work on that. And then this piece, oops, and this is the final outcome after uh, the evaporust, 
and it, it looks all right but what i'm going to do is take that sanding um uh with a sanding little ball on the rotary wheel and i'm going to I, I did a little test oops test right here and it's shining up pretty good so i'm going to spend some time doing that Well, I think we're at this point now. We are ready for assembly. I think everything is cleaned up as best as it's going to get. Let's get some of these pieces here. I think we're going to get it at least working so we can uh, test it to see if it does actually fire up before we put the glass and all the other final pieces on there. But uh, let's get together. Here's the main carburetor area. Let's see here. This is the pickup tube. Let me try out our new pliers here. We're not going to put a lot of tension, just, just enough to get it tight. I think the, uh, the choke needs to be on the fuel side. I think that's what we had it before. All right, I did check the Great Oracle. I uh, downloaded last night the parts diagram, uh, so I might be referring to that occasionally just to make sure to speed up the process. I can always go back on my videos uh, to or pictures that I usually take, but this will make the process a little faster since I've got the film still in the uh, camera. Uh, this actually goes perpendicular. We have to turn it this way. Hopefully that won't leak perpendicular so it's out of the way of the these two. This part slides on around the choke. Oh, before I forgot, let's tighten this back up too. We had, we did, undid it and I don't know why I never did disconnect. It was supposed to come out separate. Um, supposed to be able to pull out uh, we never did get that but that's all right um, that works perfect all right so we'll get this slid on there you go and I'm gonna slide it up just for a little bit so we can get our pieces on here and then this is the fuel regulator here driver or the volume control I guess I should say it goes here These pliers have been quite handy, huh? very versatile for the type of work that I, I'm doing on this. So I'm pretty happy to, pretty good purchase. It's got, oops, sorry, it's got a long thread though. I'm gonna back you up just a little bit. This is what I was talking about yesterday. I'm using the flat part of the pliers here on this this is a uh, a nut that has flat sides that you can get a full a good graphs on both sides and be parallel to let's see here let me show you see I, I can hit the flat sides of the nut and it gets a good grip whereas before yesterday the problem we were having on the gas cap there's no flat sides it was just round so you needed something that uh, instead of just having two points of contact you needed to have multiple points and that's why uh, I like these pliers because it was rounded and you could the multiple points was touching the uh, gas cap I think that's good enough perfect alright so we just put that right there there you go just like that 
let's squeeze, squeeze it together. Perfect. All right, so this is the pump where you add the air. Um, it's had a little tip on it, and we said it was one full turn. I don't think it really matters, but we're just going to make sure uh, we get it back started there because you're going to screw it on and off with this piece anyway. So, because uh, that's what opens and closes it. Just get it in there so it's touching. And then we slide this piece in the middle. Actually, I'm going to oil it up. We'll get some oil here. We're going to add more oil on the outside, but since this is fresh, I'm going to put some oil directly into it. We're going to oil this up. There's an oil port here, so we'll... Uh, Add some more oil. Yeah, now this restoration we weren't trying to, we're not getting it perfect showroom quality. We just want to get it cleaned up and looking nice and usability. But with the advent of flashlights now that produce thousands and thousands of lumens, uh, these type of lanterns, I don't know, they're so difficult to keep maintain and fuel you gotta carry fuel around I just don't know the benefits anymore it's the end of the world or something and possibly to survive then yes but they're still fun to play with take camping remind you of the good old days Cause that's all we had for light back in the day. This and the, probably a 10 lumen flashlight. All right, so. There you go, that got tight. I'm gonna open it up and then we're gonna add some oil right down in here. Probably had plenty. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Might put the excess there. Okay. Now, this is the issue I'm not sure of. You see the black on here? Now this is 50s, so I don't think it would, I probably was going to be a black, uh, brass piece, and this is just carbon buildup, but I'm not sure. Sometimes, um, on small carburetors, they have what a, a Vicron tip, it has like a little plastic tip on the seat that helps the, regulate the fuel. Um, so maybe this is the crude version of it in the 1950s. Uh, so I'm going to leave it. I didn't start taking it off. I took off a little bit at the bottom, um. It looks like it's spiraled underneath, so I don't know if that's just to hold it on. So I didn't take it off. We're just going to leave it. And then this has that fine tip on there. I'm going to stick it gently. This is what atomizes the fuel up through the tiny, tiny little hole there. So you got to be real gentle. And then this connects to the, uh, it's kind of like the choke that we've been talking about. That's right here. Here's our choke. Perfect. Let me get it just a little bit. All right. Perfect. We have the washer that goes on the bottom there. You know what? Maybe not. Maybe it goes underneath. Let's see here. I don't think. I don't think that goes there. Oops. 
because there's an indentation here to go around the pipe. So let's see if it goes like that. There you go. Perfect. All right, that's it. Just fine. Let's see if this washer fits. That fits there. And this cap. There you go. Got a little the washer right here. We got the fuel cap that goes on this side. Let's put a little fuel in there and see if we can get it to hiss. I think that's everything. All we got left is these two pieces, but that goes on the, the top, holds the uh, cap down. And that washer fits just right. So we have, there we go. We'll put those over there. Let's move all the flammable stuff out of the way. I'm gonna clean up and we'll get set up for uh, to put some fuel in here. Before we get the mantle put on, I am going to uh, fill it up with gas and we're gonna see if we can get it to hiss at least to make sure that everything's flowing properly. Here's some fresh camp fuel I got. Should be enough. It says open a quarter turn to the left and light. After mantle burns bright, open as far as possible. So we need to pump this. We got a, first thing we need to do is closed. Open it up. We need to pressurize it. So I hear it hissing. Something's See if that fixes that hissing issue. We got a leak. He's got a vent hole. See, he's got a vent hole in the cap. It's got to be closed somehow. I don't understand the screw right here because it it doesn't come all the way down. So the problem is. That's supposed to push the, the inner cap down, but then when you tighten it up, it's going to push the inner cap up, so the screw really doesn't do anything. Alright, I looked on the instructions. I didn't really see anything talking about it, so what I'm going to do is for now just put a uh, O-ring in here just to block off the air, um, and then... I'll have to do some more research. I don't know why. There you go. We got that O-ring fits. We're just trying to block the air from escaping, so that should do the trick. There you go. Let's see here. All right. Yeah. Let's see. It's leaking a little bit. Somebody's leaking. It's leaking around the bottom there. All right. Let's see here. Let's do this since we're testing it. Let's take this off. We got a leak, so yeah, the fuel's coming out. It'll find its way out one way or the other.
Yeah. You see it's leaking right here at the base. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's leaking right here at the valve. We can fix that. So the issue we're having is right here on our fuel delivery valve and it's leaking. Just didn't have it tight enough. I'll just wrench on it. There, I felt a hard stop there. Let's see if we get some of this fuel up. All right, let's try that again here. Let's back up a little bit. I'm gonna put some pressure in here. It says about 30 pumps. So this is a this valve is for cleaning the tip. So it's not a choke; it's just cleaning it. I hear pressure coming out. So I think we're getting to a point I wanted to test, and this is the big test right here, is we're going to watch. Uh, I'm going to turn it on and we're going to see fuel coming up out of the top and it should be aerosolized. So that's kind of the goal that we're trying to get go for. There you go. Alright, so I'm going to turn on the, fu the volume control and then we'll open the cleaner. Do you see the you see the fuel so I think that's kind of what we want so let's put this thing together and uh, fire it up so I got pulled out of my stock uh, mantle uh, mounted that on here and the first thing you need to do is light it up to get it to an ash so we will do that now Should turn white. So it turns to ash. We're gonna let that cool down and we'll come back and light up after we get that going. Our mantle is white, so I'm gonna turn here. I'm gonna pump it up a little bit more. I'm going to close up the pump. I think it needs to be up. I'm going to have to turn this to a quarter turn. I don't hear anything, so let's turn it down. There you go. Here, let's try again. Well, that's it. We got a working lantern, all right. Fire it up. 1956 Coleman 200A. That's a pretty bright lantern there. All right, let's get it shut off and then let's put it, the rest of it together here.
We've got everything put back together. I got the bail put on, got the reflective shield. So let's fire it up and see what it looks like put together. Pump it up a little bit more. Alright, close it up. Quarter turn. There we go. We'll let it get it warmed up just a little bit. Give it some more fuel. And there you have it. Fired up all together. I love it. I like the red color. I don't know if that reflective part is was stock or if that was an aftermarket piece but it's kind of neat because when you're walking carrying that around it's very bright and if you're trying to walk in the woods with the uh, using it kind of like a flashlight and that thing's coming back at you is you can't see it kills your night vision well, thanks for coming along with it on our adventure. We got the uh, lantern lit. That was pretty exciting. And remember, the ABCs is making. Always be creating. Till next time. And we got to fire it up.